Focal plane curtain bounce occurs when the shutter curtain bounces open after the exposure. Incomplete travel occurs when the curtain stops prior to reaching the end of the frame. Now I only have one example to illustrate these because frankly, the way that these issues manifest looks almost identical between the two of them, but we'll, I'll show you with this sample how to determine what actually caused it. This sample shows incomplete shutter curtain travel. Both of these issues, whether it's curtain bounce or incomplete travel, tend to be rare and tend to affect only older cameras with horizontal travel cloth curtains. First, this is a normal shutter process for a focal plane shutter. What you're seeing here is a, a vertical travel curtain, but pretend it's not. And this shows the process by which one curtain opens and then the second one follows after some very short duration of time. The width and the gap between the, the lead and the trailing curtains dictates the exposure time. Shorter and longer exposures aren't caused by the curtain physically moving faster. The curtain will always move at the same speed. Your shutter speed is determined by the time between the leading and trailing curtains beginning their travel. So when that time is very short, then the exposure time is accordingly short. And when the time between the two curtains beginning of their travel is long, the exposure time is accordingly long. When curtain bounce occurs, the curtains physically bounce backward after completing travel. This results in a band of overexposed negative where the curtains bounced back and left a gap between the leading and trailing curtain. When a shutter does not complete its travel, like in this example, you also get a bright white band. That part of this issue looks the same, that, that bright white band. So here's a fun fact about the band, that, that bright white band that's left by incomplete curtain travel. The width of that bright white band is the width of the gap between the curtains for that exposure time. In this sample image, the exposure was one one thousandth of a second, so you can see the curtain gap for this camera's fastest shutter speed. You can tell bounce from incomplete travel by looking at the image between the bright white band and the edge of the frame in the direction that the curtain travels. In the case of curtain bounce, the curtains go all the way to the edge of the frame and then one or both of them bounce back. So the area of the white bar, typically it's only the trailing curtain that bounces back. So the white bar will tend to go from the distance of the bounce all the way to the edge of the frame. Now, sometimes if it's not overexposed to the point where it's bright white, you might just see a double image if the camera moved when that bounce occurred. With incomplete travel, however, the image will, between the edge of the white line and the edge of the frame, will blur and be darker. And that's because what happens to fix the incomplete travel is that the film is advanced. And as the film is advanced after the exposure, the shutter curtains close and the film moves at the same time. So that blurring and darkening is because the curtains are moving over that area. The film is moving at the same time. And because of that joint movement, you're getting blurring, but you're also getting a little bit less exposure. So um, it looks darker and it creates this dragged image that you see here in this sample. In either case, if you see this with your film, the camera will need to have professional service to tighten up the curtains and the springs that guide the timing and the travel.